Today I'm going to talk about some basics. I'm going to answer some questions like what's an operating system, what's a program? Questions that uh, most people watching this presentation probably think they know all the answers to. Well the reason I'm doing this is because I've heard too often the answer to a question when a problem comes up at the seniors computer group as follows. Quite often people will ask questions about a problem they're having with their email and the uh, people who are trying to help first of all say what email system are you using? And too often the answer is I don't know I just click email and I read it. I hope to help that sort of situation with this presentation. Most of us have a pretty good idea that our computer is made up of two basic chunks. One chunk is the hardware and we're pretty comfortable with what that is and where it is and what the pieces of it are. And the other chunk is the software. I'm going to devote this presentation to the software because the software in your computer is also broken up into chunks. And the chunks have specific names because they do specific things and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's start. What's an operating system? Well, it is software, but it's software that has a particular purpose. It is to operate, control, and organize all the rest of the software in your computer. The best example of that is when you go down to the lower left hand corner and click start if you're in Windows 7 or you do what it says to get to the start menu if you're in Windows 8 and when you click start you see various things in your computer these are programs these are places you can go like control panel and your operating system controls what you do with those things operating systems started out way back when as DOS and graduated to various Windows systems we some of us remember Windows 93 and Windows 95 and most of us now are up at Windows 7, uh, Windows 8, and some are graduating with great trepidation to Windows 10. All of those are operating systems, and the operating system's purpose is to operate your computer using the rest of the software in your computer. So now that we know what an operating system is, what else do we need to know about the operating system on our particular computer? Well, and, and, and what else do we know about some parts of the operating system that we're almost certainly going to use while using our computer? Well, you probably know what number operating system you have because when your computer turns on, it... Uh, usually says starting Windows 7 or starting Windows XP and when the first window comes up it mine at any rate says Windows 7 professional down at the bottom but supposing you want to know a little bit more about the details of that version of the operating system where do you go to find out well there's several places you want to go to some place that says computer or says operating system let me show you a few ways to get there. If you go to um, your desktop and find computer or my computer and right click on it, you'll get a window and one of the choices is properties. If you left click on that, it will bring up a description of your Windows edition. Mine says Windows 7 Professional Service Pack 1. 
Another way to get there is to go to your start menu and type operating system in your search box. And shortly you get uh, one choice in control panel that says show which operating system your computer is running and if you click on that you get the same thing I just showed you that you get from uh, going to computer and looking at properties there are other ways to do it you can Google which operating system is my computer using and you will get lots of other suggestions there are other ways to do it like go to the start menu and go to computer at least you do this in Windows 7 and if you click on that you then will see what's on your what's in your computer but one of the things up above is system properties and once again that will take you back to the one that describes your version of your operating system in Windows 8 you can go to system either in a search or in the control panel or even in the list of things that comes up when you uh, go to the lower left hand corner of your screen and right click where one of the options is desktop but further up another option is system you click on that and you'll get the same thing that I just showed you for my computer with Windows 7 now let's talk about a very important portion of the operating system and that is Windows Explorer Windows Explorer is the part of the operating system you go to when you click this icon which is almost always the first one at the bottom of your uh, uh, taskbar if you have your taskbar set up and it's also in your uh, accessories in all programs if you go down to accessories and open that folder you will see down here Windows Explorer and when you click on that or down here you get a window that shows all the files in your computer and shows you how to get to any one of them by navigating through Windows Explorer I'm not going to go through the details of how to do that in this mini seminar but uh, there are instructions in my list of mini seminars the important point is that Windows Explorer which uh, is often confused by newcomers with Internet Explorer but if you stop and think about the two uh, collections of words Windows Explorer allows you to explore the things that are in your Windows based computer and Internet Explorer allows you to explore the Internet Microsoft has gotten a little bit smarter in Windows 8 and 10 by calling it by calling Windows renaming Windows Explorer file Explorer which is really a much better description it explores the files that are in various folders in this folder called documents uh, there's another folder called my documents and in that one there's another folder called documents and in that one there's a folder called documents often used which has the various uh, subject folders that I have set up for my computer financial my favorites uh, some uh, genealogy stuff family information etc that's how I organize my files so 
Windows Explorer or File Explorer in 8 or 10 is the part of your operating system that allows you to get to and from all the files in your computer and to move them around and organize them so that you can find things easily in your computer. So now that we know more than we ever wanted to know about our operating system and about one of its major components, uh, Windows Explorer or File Explorer, let's talk about the rest of these questions. Uh, what's a program, what's a browser, etc. with the objective of always being able to answer the question, what am I doing right now? What do I have going on my computer and how can I tell what I have going on my computer? Even if I use it every day but uh, didn't really know what I was doing. So, what's a program? Well, programs are programs like Microsoft Word in which I have constructed this document. Uh, programs are also program programs are also something like Microsoft Excel, which is here showing a spreadsheet, or Skype, which we have talked about before recently, uh, or even an old uh, genealogy program called Family Tree Maker. So where are the programs on my computer? Well, lots of them are on your taskbar. Uh, everything on my taskbar except Windows Explorer and this one here which is a shortcut to a folder with a bunch of files in it that I use often. Everything down here on my taskbar past that is a program. Quicken, Chrome, uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Skype, my uh, Family Tree Maker uh, genealogy program. They're all down here. Also, the rest of my programs are either here on the Start menu or in All Programs, in folders titled by uh, titled by the uh, either the the uh, provider of that program like Microsoft here Microsoft Office or by the name of the program like Family Tree Maker my genealogy program and once again how do I tell what I'm doing right now. What am I doing right now? I am looking at a file which is open in a program and the program's name is almost always at the top of the page and quite often the file that I'm looking at and the name of that file is also right next to the name of the program. And if I want to see where that file is, I can go to File. And if I have already saved it, I can go to Save As. And a Save As window will come up showing me where that file is. It's in folders uh, that start off in C and then go to users and then go to Hank and then go to my documents and then to documents and then to Camtasia Studio and then to the then to the folder what am I doing so if I start over here you'll see that C is highlighted and if I click the little triangle next to it I will see now that users is highlighted and if I click that triangle I will see now that Hank is highlighted and I click that triangle goes to my documents, that one to documents, that one to Camtasia Studio, that one to what am I doing, which is the folder that I put together for keeping all the files having to do with this presentation. And then in what I am doing, I am looking at the basics, dot docx. That's how I tell where the file that I'm looking at up here, close that, where is the file that I'm looking at, that's how you find 
that out and you are looking at you're looking at it in the program with whose name is up at the top of the page so the next question is what's a browser and if I'm running one how do I know what browser it is well a browser is a program but it is a particular kind of program that you use to surf the internet to go onto the web and look at places on the internet and it's particularly important to understand what you're looking at in a browser and what the browser does because quite often that's what people's email runs on it isn't necessarily that their your email runs on a browser but it but almost all of them can run on a browser and many of them do run all the time on a browser mine does nowadays so how do you tell what a browser is and how many different browsers are there well there are basically three for uh, Windows computers PCs there's one more for Apple's or Macs which is called Safari but the three that are common in Mac in uh, Windows systems are Google Chrome which I'm running here and Internet Explorer which I'm also running here at the moment just to show you and Firefox which I'm running here all three of them get to where they are going and show you something on the web by putting an address in the box that is almost always in the upper left hand corner of the window and that box shows the universal oh dear it's a URL universal something locator resource show the address here this one is showing finance.yahoo.com and a particular kind of a particular page on finance.yahoo.com which is showing what's going on in the in the stock market right at the moment it's a pretty good day this is uh, for for those of you who are watching this sometime later uh, the market is up 543 points today after starting out up a bit and then dropping quite a bit but it's recovering and that's pretty good because this I, I'm recording this on uh, August 26 which is uh, halfway through the week in which the market absolutely tanked but going back to what's a browser this is a browser and this is the Firefox browser now how do you tell that it is the Firefox browser and how do you tell what you're looking at well usually that what you're looking at is displayed up here in in uh, one of these tabs I could be looking at my AOL mail if I click that one there or I could be looking at a uh, page on the Motley Fool called Mechanical Investing but I am or was when this came up looking at Yahoo Finance but this doesn't really tell me that I'm doing it on Firefox the way you figure that out is by going over here to the far right and it says open menu that's really not very descriptive is it but what it means is that that's the overall menu for this particular browser and you get on here and you can usually find something that says ah options now if I click that one it will tell me always check if Firefox is your default browser and um, general and search and content and application so now I know that this is Firefox and if I close that tab I go back to where I was Yahoo Finance now if I go to uh, 
Internet Explorer, where I'm looking at other things, I also see over on the right hand side uh, a gear which it, if I click gives me the same sort of thing as a menu. It says about Internet Explorer. If I click that one it will tell me <clears throat> what version of Internet Explorer this is. Finally the third browser that I have on my computer is Google Chrome. Once again you see the address up here and once again it is finance.yahoo.com and once again you see a place over here to get to menus and in that menu it says about Google Pro Chrome. And when that comes up in its own tab here, it will tell me that I'm running Google Chrome, about Google Chrome, and it will tell me the version of Google Chrome that I am running. There is one other way to tell what browser you're looking at if you're in Windows 7. And this may be easier for some of you. Supposing you're uh, looking at this browser and you want to know what, uh, what browser it is. Well, if you get out of, to uh, your taskbar and you hover over one of the browser icons, it will show you what is sh being shown on that browser. That's obviously not this not this website. If I come over to here to Internet Explorer, it's not that one either. If I come over here and hover over Firefox, and I know that that symbol is Firefox, it shows that that's, that's the browser that is showing this website here. Likewise, if I then go to what's showing on this page and hover over here I can see that that is an Internet Explorer display and if I come over to Chrome and hover over that once again I can see that that is what is being shown on the on the screen by that browser. Maybe that's easier for some of you now, before I go on to uh, discussions about email, just a couple of more minutes on what's a file and what's a folder. Files are, you can think of files as the pieces of paper you would have put in these manila folders before we had computers. Here are, here is a uh, stack of folders sitting on top of a desk probably on this holder somewhere with uh, three folders one for blue things one for red things and one for green things and in each one of these folders we were probably individual pieces of paper those individual pieces of paper are what are equivalent to files these days only it might be a document or a picture or another file in your computer like the entire uh, history of your financial transactions kept in the, the Quicken program. That's one file. The other thing you need to think about about folders is that in this day and age of folders in your computer, you can have a whole drawer of folders that you decide are going to be on one subject and therefore you label that drawer in your file cabinet uh, financial information and maybe you have uh, a whole drawer of or a whole file cabinet of different kinds of financial information and maybe you label that uh, uh, whole file cabinet uh, as another folder and call it my financial future and then you could even have a whole 
room or several different rooms full of file cabinets and you can have bigger and bigger folders to hold the folders which are really uh, drawers or whole file cabinets in those uh, in that room so now we get to the question that started this whole subject what what does my email program run on that's worth a whole new page Basically, there are two ways to use email. You can use it on the web, and in that case, all your email messages are actually on the web, and you are looking at them on the web. Or, in some programs, you can read your email in a program in your computer. In that case, the email messages that you are looking at are in your computer. They have to be downloaded into your computer, which can happen automatically or can happen at your command. Some email, pro email programs allow both and some only one. So how do we answer the question? How do you tell what your email program is so that when the guy who's handling Q&A asks you what's your email program you can give a knowledgeable answer well while you're looking at it do you see a browser or a program and in order to answer those questions you have to have understood the other descriptions of what is a browser and what is a program and where do you look on the browser or on the, the program to tell what program is running or what browser is running if you can answer those questions you can answer this question what does my email program run on now let me offer a couple of examples I'm going to start my examples with AOL partly because that's the email program that I've used since I had my first computer with a modem and partly because it demonstrates the different ways that that an email program can be run the different ways that you can get at it when I first started off with AOL I started off with the AOL program they're still around AOL desktop 9.7 is the program that I can open and you see this is a program because up at the top it says AOL desktop 9.7 connected not signed on it doesn't show tabs and it doesn't show uh, all the things that go with a browser and in order to get my email I have to sign on and I can do that within this AOL program it tells me I'm now connecting it automatically puts on my password and it says uh, all the good things that AOL computer checkup could do for me now I don't want to do that and now when I am signed on it'll tell me that I have mail and eventually it will show me my incoming email messages and if I wanted to send an email I could click right up here and it will bring up a window that will allow me to compose an email and send it to various people the point is that right now when I'm looking at this these incoming emails I'm looking at them in my computer I'm not looking at them with a browser they are now right now in my computer and if I go to click one and save it it will be saved in my computer and I can get back at it later this is an example of a program that is an email program that you use by 
turning on a program in your computer and reading your emails in that program. Now I don't normally do that anymore because this is a big clunky bulky bulky it'll do everything it'll tell you the weather it'll it'll shine your shoes and wash your car maybe uh, so I have gone to AOL webmail and the way I do that is by going to my browser and pulling up HTTPS mail.aol.com and my webmail. This is obviously as a, br a browser. Here are all the tabs that I have open up above. And here are the email messages that I could read. The San Diego Symphony wants to support our troops. It's having a seventh annual free military concert. And there is that email. Now, I am now looking at that email, which is on the World Wide Web. It's on the Internet. I am looking at it, just like I can look at any other web page uh, on, on the Internet. I am looking at it with a browser. I am looking at it with Google Chrome, right there. This is a browser. This particular browser is Google Chrome. There's one other way that I can look at my AOL mail, and that is right here in a program in my computer. The program is Microsoft Outlook, and I recently set up Microsoft Outlook to pull up my emails from AOL and display them in Outlook. So there is an example of one email program that can be run three different ways. One by reading it on the provider the emails program AOL 9 desktop 9.7 I think it was. Another way is on Microsoft Out Outlook which is another program in my computer down here or same message you notice or on the web looking at webmail now I get emails from two other in two other ways one of them is Gmail I have a Gmail address And I have this because the board of the Seniors Computer Group uses a Google group to communicate within the board and sends out email messages using Gmail to the members of that Google group, which are the board members and committee members. Now I have my Gmail messages set to automatically be forwarded to AOL Mail. So each one of these SCG messages, this one came in on August 23rd, if I go back to my AOL Mail, if I go back to my AOL Mail, I have so many things running on my computer right now that uh, it is, uh, here we go, clicking the wrong place. If I go back to my AOL mail and go to my inbox and go back to May 23rd, I would find that same SCG message. Excuse me, August 23rd, which is, as I'm doing this not that long ago, There it is, right there. See, SCG message, it was forwarded from Gmail into my AOL system.
And finally, I have a Yahoo account. I can get to it on a browser. It is a browser only account. And uh, here I am at the finance page on <coughs> Yahoo. But I can click up here to mail. And if I am signed in, as I am, it says I'm signed in, they recognize my name there, I get my Yahoo email. I keep this Yahoo account primarily to uh, submit when there's something on the internet that I really want to sign up for and they but I really don't want to get any spam email from them and they require an email address and I use my Yahoo email address and practically never look at this that's it that's how you can get to the point where you can answer the question what does my email run on and answer all the other questions like what am I doing am I looking at a program am I looking at a browser if so what browser am I looking at a file where did it come from and what folder is it in I think these are all useful things for everyone to know and I hope this presentation has helped that this is an add-on to the uh, what am I doing video to provide a way for some people that may be easier to determine exactly what they're looking at what's a browser or what's a program if you go down to the bottom of your screen on your taskbar and hover over a given program that has files open in it, each one of the files that is open has over it a title. This one, for example, has a title Document 2 Microsoft Word. This one has, the, which is the one I was using a moment ago to start this uh, edition, has one called the basics.docx, and this would say Microsoft Word if it were long enough. Now, if you hover over this, this particular window, or any other window, it will show you the in a, in a little pop-up it will show you the actual title of that and at the end of it the name of the program that you're looking at and that also is true if you hover over a browser well that one isn't popping up right now because I'm recording. Let's see if it'll work in Google Chrome. Yes, AOL Mail Google Chrome is the pop-up that comes up here. Some of the programs and some of the browsers have the name of the browser or the name of the program before the actual place that you're looking at right now, and some have it after. So it may or may not be easy on the uh, picture of the actual window to see the name of the browser. Here's one for example where the name of the program 123 is at the beginning and the name of the actual spreadsheet that's there which is now called untitled is uh, is after that. At any rate I think this will help some of you. Good luck!